breath. Hello, everyone. So in this video, we are going to be looking at music. And music is really one of our most fundamental art forms. Um, in another video, we talk about storytelling as perhaps the most uh, ancient art. Music is right up there with it. And as we'll see, it might even be said to predate humanity. Although, can you have music without an audience? Uh, maybe. Um, but it is all around us. It is a part and part and parcel of who we are. Music is so very intrinsically linked to human culture uh, and to society and to art. It's really, it's a great art form. Uh, it's something that we probably all of us, most if not all of us listen to every day. So yeah. Um, now I will let you read through a lot of this on your own, but I did want to highlight a few things like affect. Affect is important. Um, it's what the emotional content of the music is. That's usually what the music is about. And there are some things that have affect across all human cultures and times, like a steady rhythmic percussive beat makes you think of something martial makes you think of drum beats and marching feet. It has that kind of get you energized tone, at least the right kind of drum beats. I'm not a musician. I can't reproduce it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but uh, certain instruments have certain effects on the human mind or the human psyche or emotions because of how we're built, because of just the way our heartbeat works or things like that. Uh, others are very much culturally and temporally defined. So like uh, there's a great example from um, Back to the Future where Marty McFly at the big dance at the end, he's from 1985, he goes back to 1955 and he starts playing rock and roll for them and they love it. And he's playing Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good, which is a 50s classic and they love it. And then he starts shredding like an 80s metal guitarist and everybody just like, what the hell? What's wrong with you? And the classic line is, you know, you don't like it, but your kids will love it. And and that's true. Musical tastes change over time. What sounds good to us would be horrendous to our ancestors or to our descendants and vice versa, um, which is kind of a fun way to play with culture. Um, so melody is, uh, yeah, things like melody, rhythm, tempo, you know most of these. Um, harmony, I should note, is when two mo notes or two more two or more sounds occur at the same time. That doesn't mean it sounds good. Um, and again, this is a cultural thing or a temporal thing of what we consider concordant, that's sounding good together, another person from another time or place may consider discordant, that's sounding bad together. A lot of the early criticism of rock and roll and blues was that, oh, it sounds so screechy and horrible and they're using all these horrible notes and it's just garbage. And now it's commonplace and even normal. Um, so, yeah, beat is a fun one. Um, it's the basic unit of time. The most music is in 4-4 four, four time. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, or most of Western music is, I should say, uh, most, the other one you will commonly hear is three, four time, which is where you get like the waltz, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, those are beats, but I highlight those because here I have a video about Liberace. You probably don't know who he is, but he was a celebrity, uh, pianist during the sixties, mostly, um, little in the fifties, little in the seventies. Uh, he was incredibly flamboyant. He was a closeted gay man, and he was such a an amazing musician that in a society where that was not acceptable, he got away with it because he was just that damn good. Um, oh, this is an elements of music video. Uh, it's it's intended for a younger audience, but it does highlight these things fairly well. Worth worth of you know the five minutes, but here's Liberace playing Boogie Woogie, which is usually done eight to the bar, so twice as fast as most music. And then he goes into 16 to the bar, quadruple speed, and it's still a recognizable song. He's still keeping up with it. He is just that damn good. Um, so yeah, just watch that as 
a lot of these videos consider them part of your musical education um, of things you might not know or might not have come across, but are worthwhile. So you get some more definitions, some more terms. Um, but take a minute and pause the video and reflect on these questions. How does music affect you? How does it change you? What is the power that music has over you? Um, and I mean, you know, pause and think about it. All right, you're back. See, one thing I like to think about is, or one thing I've I learned uh, some years ago, which I believe is entirely true, is that music can alter not only your emotional state, but in many ways your psychological state. So next time you have a job interview, next time you need to feel powerful, you know, especially if you're wearing like a dark suit or a dark clothes, put on the Imperial March from Star Wars, you know, the Vader March, dun, 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 dun. See if you don't stand a little straighter and just feel a little more powerful, like you're Vader striding through the ranks of troops, you know, you feel in charge because of the associations of that music and because of the qualities of the music itself. So I think that's really cool. Um, and if you played it differently, if you play like, da, 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 like if you, would that change it? Um, I ask that because this next video that I would suggest you watch is from Mozart who wrote Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Bet you didn't know that. Um, and this is like, I think 12 variations of it. And just listen to a few, but notice where a lot of, you can more or less hear the same song <clears throat> or at least the same core song, but it changes the quality. It makes you think of different things. It has different elements to it. Um, so a lot of videos in this one because music, and this will be true going forward for our class. Um, a lot of the art forms that we're looking at after with, at, with music and after are performative. So you kind of need to see, see the videos. Um, but this video from Zatoichi, the blind swordsman, a very good, uh, samurai movie highlights where, uh, where music comes from. And it is the natural world, the, the rainwater around you, the rhythm of people moving and dancing, dance and music co-evolve, especially in the human brain, you will hear music and it will make you want to dance, or you will start, you will just kind of, sometimes people will feel the urge to move and they will create a kind of music all their own, um, which is fascinating to me. I think that's really cool. Um, so do watch that. It's it's only a couple minutes long. It's a really good movie. All the music in it is natural sounds or like, like people sawing and hammering, people dancing in the rain. It's really cool. This video uh, goes, and there are several like this on YouTube uh, that go through kind of the evolution of music and the ways just samples of music uh, create recreated through archaeology and through historical study um, that shows you what music looked like in various cultures across the ages. And notice the kind of the natural elements, but also the influence of religion and ceremony, um, because that is a big part of it. Uh, and I, it, I, again, I think it's fascinating. I also, I also think it's really cool that there are people out there whose entire life livelihood is just studying ancient Mesopotamian songs and how they were performed and recreating them. Um, there's some really niche fields out there that you can get really cool with. And then this is a discussion of how music and religion co-evolved. Um, the ritual origins of music and the elements at play in it. Whether we're talking about and chanting. I happen to really like this channel, Religion for Breakfast. Uh, it's a little dry, but it is very academically thorough. It's very, I find it interesting. Uh, if you're a nerdy person, you probably will too. I, I, but yeah. Um, so those are, those are some things about the background of music to be aware of. Now then, again, I'll let you read through most of this history on your own but I want to highlight the blues and jazz especially <clears throat> because um, the blues and jazz are really, um, they're endemic. They're, they're worth talking about for two things. One, they highlight an important fact uh, and pardon me for being crass about saying this or for being a little blunt. All good music comes from black people, but I, sorry, some categories there. All good American music comes from minority groups. I should say, uh, so African-American groups, 
or African American uh, communities, Latino or Latinx communities. Uh, that's where we get a lot of really cool guitar stuff. Uh, Santana is great. Um, Asian American communities, Native communities, uh, all of these communities interacting and give us these amazing musical styles. White people just market it um, and also make polka. Uh, and to be fair, white people have good music, but it's usually, again, from marginalized, downtrodden, oppressed communities. You know, nobody wants to think of country music. It You listen to a country song, you or what happens when you play a country song backwards? You get your wife back, your job back, your truck back, and your dog back. Country music is about losing everything and life being shit. Uh, and it's loved the world over. Um, people, and I, I, I had an Irish guy I knew in college who just loved country. And I, it astounded me. I'm like, no, it's being Irish is all about suffering and misery. Of course we love country. Uh, the Caribbean islands country is popular. They're all over the world. And, and again, folk music all over the world is the same. Life sucks. Let's drink. Um, so pardon me for painting with a, a, a too broad a brush, but marginalized communities, um, especially ethnically marginalized ones are often where we get the best music. Um, yeah. And again, especially black communities coming out of the, uh, slavery, bringing West African, especially musical instruments and traditions, including the banjo, uh, to the Americas intermingling with Christian hymns to give got to get gospel music, which in, then grows into the blues, which is all about life being shit, uh, and into jazz, which is a bit more free form. And all three of these are where rock and roll comes from. Uh, and rock and roll is where a lot of modern music comes from. Uh, rap also comes all out of a lot of blues and gospel tradition. Um, and is now the most dominant art, you know, genre in the world. Um, so really, it's it's amazing. Uh, and from my perspective, I especially like blues and jazz because they put America on the map. Uh, the same is true. I believe I talk about this when we talk about literature, but it's also true of uh, like film noir and uh pulp novels like gangster novels and you know dark gritty stuff like that um those and jazz made america um so in the 16 17 18 even 1900s if you wanted to be cultured you looked to france in western europe uh france was the pinnacle of culture in western europe paris decided what culture was that's why uh, British English has so many random U's in it. They wanted to be more French. So they added all the extra letters for no reason. Seriously. Um, so in the uh, early 1900s, World War I, a bunch of American soldiers get drafted, go over to France and Europe, and they fight in the war. And in with them are a lot of African-American soldiers. And in France, they're not treated like garbage. Um they're not treated like second-class citizens, which is not necessarily because France was so much more enlightened or woke than America, just pretty much all of their men of that generation were dead um, because of the war. So they, and they decided American money spent just fine, no matter what color you were. But the African-American soldiers got treated like real human beings in France. And so a lot of them decided to stay. And they brought with them elements of the club scene from Harlem, uh, from the Harlem Renaissance. Well, with not from the Harlem Renaissance, that comes a little later, but around that same time, that same percolation, the same great Northern migration, they bring jazz, they bring blues, they bring gospel. They also bring film noir. Uh, not so much the African-Americans, but the Americans in general bring film noir. And the, the French look at this and go, oh, uh, it, modernism is a big thing at the time, bringing in other cultural groups, different minority groups that have not been considered on the world stage and the French say oh look at the origins in Africa look at the suffering look at how life is shit uh how like life how artistic and the French being French they love this stuff and they say this is art and because the French say this 
suddenly America has actual cultural legitimacy. Right now, America is the dominant soft power in the world. We we dictate global culture in many ways. You don't get that without jazz and blues and film noir and the French saying the Americans are making art. Before that, we were a bunch of backwoods hicks out in the middle of nowhere, just, you know, blowing in our jugs and having our hootenannies or whatever. Now we are making art. Now we are a legitimate artistic force. And it's our our club culture, our jazz, our pop culture that's doing it, which I, as somebody who studies pop culture, I love. Um, so yeah, jazz and blues are incredibly influential. Um, here are some examples. Lucille by B.B. King, Crossroads by Robert Johnson. Uh, the Crossroads in Blues is where you go to sell your soul to the devil. The story is that Robert Johnson is the reason that we have the guitar. That's another aspect of this. Not the reason, the reason that we have guitar hero, I should say. Before Robert Johnson, the guitar existed, obviously. It was a more Latin instrument. Uh, it was associated with troubadours. It was associated with like romantic ballads and the think mariachi bands or the guys standing outside the lover's window playing in the middle of the night, uh, waking, all, waking all the cats or whatever. Um, that's what guitar was. Robert Johnson starts starts playing blues guitar and he just explodes onto the scene uh and he make he's the one who makes the guitar cool he makes the guitar a a popular instrument not just a thing for lovers but a thing for badasses and he's the reason uh, a lot of the the english guitarists in the 60s the british invasion grow up listening to imported blues records of robert johnson uh be um Eric Clapton even did a cover of Crossroads. Uh, and so all of this uh, is because Robert Johnson, and he's the reason that guitar is like the, the badass instrument that everybody wants to play in a rock band today. He's the reason the guitar hero is a thing because of his influence. And again, he exploded onto the scene, died three years later, tragically and mysteriously, although according to some stories, he was shot by a jealous husband, which is not so mysterious. Uh, but the the story goes that he sold his soul to the devil for his blues guitar talent. And three years later, the devil came to collect. And that's why the sudden death. Um, so, yeah, also points to all the, the folklore and the art that springs up around art, which is, again, all what I'm all about. So, yeah, things to know, more musical genres that, again, um, see more world influence, which is really, really cool, more Latin influence, uh, more elements from all over the world. And so some of that you get in things like marching band, which, um, you know, you have basically any marching band that you think of in the modern day derives almost exclusively from HBCUs, his, uh, historically black college and universities, and their marching band tradition. This video walks through some of that history pretty briefly. And um, the uh, this other video is, uh, well, it's a discussion of how all modern music is just riffing on classical stuff and it's all the same. Um, it's These are both meant to be funny. I think they're amusing, but I have learned that my tastes are not everyone's tastes. Uh, so I hope you enjoy them. Please watch them. Some other things about music to consider how mu music is a, sp a unique art form in that it blends with so many others. Um, you add it to literature and you it, you add it to music plus poetry, you get song, you get song lyrics. You can add it to music, you can add it to film and get music videos or animation. Uh, I've seen people take up, slice, used to be a thing, anime music videos where they would slice up different chunks, of, like scenes and clips from different anime and match them to a song um, just as a, a an editing practice or for fun. Um, Michael Jackson's Thriller is a 13 minute video with a five minute song in the middle. It's like five minutes before the music even starts. But all of these highlight how music interacts with things. Cowboy Bebop is an anime based on jazz and it's fantastic. Um, definitely worth your, worth your while and a classic intro. I still listen to it. 
Daft Punk did a movie called Interstellar 5555. Uh, if you've heard One More Time or Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, those are from the movie. And it's an entire movie with an entire plot with no dialogue, just music. It is a movie made of music videos uh, that, it, that encapsulates the entire narrative, and it's really cool. Um, I know, I know, I'm getting into more and more videos to watch, but it's just, I kind of want to... Music is such a powerful art form. It deserves so much discussion, and there's so much to say about it. But I do want to keep this video to a semi-rational length. So um, another thing about music is it unifies like sea shanties or songs for a chain gang. You time the music. They're often callback songs, especially the chorus. So everybody sings the chorus together or sings the callback together and you time your stroke. If you're pulling on a line on a, on a boat or if you're striking together on a chain gang like hoeing or laying railroad tracks or whatever, the work is easier with rhythm. The work is easier with song. It's more effective. Uh, with the sea, sea songs pulling on a rope, you can't do it unless you're in time. So the music allows it to happen because humans are basically designed to be musical. It's, it's that potent in our brains, which is really cool. Um, jumping around slightly, Here's the thing about music and how it affects mood and background songs. Uh, listen to, if, you, if you've never heard about Seinfeld, well, congratulations. That's probably says something about your taste. Um, but it's uh, it was the quintessential 90s sitcom, a show about nothing. Um, listen to just a few seconds of this soundtrack. By God, for God's sake, don't listen to all 40 minutes of it. But just get an idea of how bouncy and silly and kind of meaningless it is. And imagine that over anything. It's very silly. It's very goofy. And then watch this video. They took a silly, goofy, oh, 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 bow, 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 and then overlaid it with the theme music from the psychological thriller Twin Peaks. And it turns a silly, goofy show about nothing into a horror like bad things are about to happen and it's really unnerving. Um, so again, music has this power. It's so potent and it can do so many things. Um, and, and the way you play a song can change it drastically. Um, oh, real quick before I get into that, I will also mention this video, four minutes and 33 seconds or 433. It's the only musical piece I can play. Um, it's by John Cage. You only should listen to like the first movement, which is only about the first minute and a half. Um, but it is, go ahead and listen to it. Do it now. You done? Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, it's a song, it's a, a piece where he plays nothing. But is there no music? What is music? Is there not the sound of, probably your air conditioner running or your computer or the camera recording equipment in the background. It's hard. It might be hard to hear, but in this video at one point, somebody coughs and a woman, a woman behind him goes Shh, like he's going to interrupt the music or something. Um, so what is music? And that's, that's a, an interesting question to ask. That's something postmodernism asks a lot. What is art? Where do we draw the limits or where, what is the line? Um, and I granted it's the kind of thing that's clever one time, but it's, I, I, I think it's a worthwhile question. Um, so then again, compare that the way, the way a song is played can change the affect, can change the meaning, can change the mood, can radically alter it. Um, and I think that's really fascinating. So we have here two examples. Um, and in this one, Hurt, Nine Inch Nails did the original. And then Johnny Cash came along and he covered it. And uh, I think Trent Reznor, whoever wrote it, the guy, the head singer, the lead singer of Nine Inch Nails said, yeah, it's his song now. Like everybody agrees, including the original band, that Johnny Cash did a better version. 
because it's about misery and pain and disappointment. And I mean, just look at Johnny Cash. Like that's, that's a face that's been through 50 years of hard living. That's, that's, a, that's had some, some bad choices done to it. Uh, and his voice Crown. and his, yeah. And he recorded this uh, shortly after receiving a terminal diagnosis. So he knew he was going to die. And so you can really feel that in the performance. So I would recur encourage you to listen to both and see how the different vocal elements, the different speed, the different, you know, just the way it's composed, the film even, how does that change it? And then contrast that with uh, Hallelujah, which if you've seen Shrek, you probably know. And you probably know the kind of light and gentle, dun, 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 the Rufus Wainwright version, the cover, um, which is nice. It's a beautiful song. I love it. But if you listen to the Leonard Cohen one, he was a heroin addict. And it's about like hitting rock bottom and recovery and struggling with God at 3 a.m. in the middle of a, a bad night. Um, and to my mind, at least, the original is infinitely more powerful. Um, but apparently I like, you know, old men with sad songs. Um, so how does that change it? What is what is the difference? What changes to you? Is one better than the other? Or are they two equally good renditions that are just different? Um, and I'm not saying that there is an answer. But again, I think these questions are valuable. So last thing, um, theme songs. I loves me some theme songs. Uh, DuckTales, the 2017 version, is one of the best ones ever. Um, a good theme song can make a show, especially anime theme songs. Um, but are theme songs music? Or are they an ad? Or are they somewhere in between? Um, and if you had to pick a theme song, what would it be and why? So i tell you what, uh, I'm not going to make a file for it just to make sure you listened all the way to the end. If you email me with your name, your class number, including the hyphen, because I have multiple classes and I get confused otherwise, and your response to these two questions, I will give you extra credit. Um, for the, and, and full answers, please, like, don't just say, do they count as music? Yes. Like, why? And don't just say, my theme song would be uh, Bodies, because I'm a badass. You know, give, give me something more introspective than that, please. But, you know, a, a paragraph or so. Respond to this. Think about it. Interact with music. And let me know what you think. I look forward to seeing your responses. Uh, take care. Have a good one. Bye.